Alright everybody, hello, it's Snap again, and yes, I have actually done episode 2 of this thing. I don't know if anybody wanted it, but I did episode 2 because I feel like uploading this stuff. It did take me a while because I got distracted with other things, and I'm just going to take a while again because I'm going to Anaheim soon for FBLA National Conference thing. It's a competition where I do smart stuff, but... Well, that's not the point of this video. Uh, this is episode two, and uh, we're going to do the orth orthography, which I forgot to show last time, and a bit of the verbal, more verbal, ver verbal, not verbal. This, this, this is not odd vorbis. It's 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 verbs. Uh, verbal morphology, the first part, because it's going to take a while, or at least a little while. Then afterwards, we're going to go into nouns, and then, uh, actually, no, for, after that, we're going to go into pronouns. And then we're going to go in, oh, into nouns, and then we're going to go a, through a little bit on adjectives, and then we're going to go into the, uh, and then we're going to go into the derivational morphology, which is basically how you use words to make other words. And then the syntax, and then other stuff, and then we're done. Well, after I upload, well, then I have to upload a lexicon somewhere, but whatever, you know. Alright, so let's just get on with the... I forgot what's next. Latin orthography! This is kind of what you would expect. Um... Yeah, basically what you would expect, uh, except for the two, uh... Th sounds th and th. I used a T with a Karen instead, and for long vowels, it's it's got uh, it's got two dots on it gets two dots on on top of it. I don't know why I did that, but that's how I did it. And the W is after the long vowel accent mark because. I forgot to put the W in whenever I was doing this. That always happens for some reason. It, and I even did it with the Cyrillic orthography. Because yes, I did this too. Because <laughs> it's kind of similar. Sort of. Yeah. If you don't know what this alphabet is, it's basically the alphabet used by Russian, I think, uh, I think Bul Bulgarian maybe? Uh, some other. To Russian, maybe Bulgarian, and other Slavic languages, I think. Yeah, that's it. Um, it works a little differently. Here I'm just kind of adapted how, how the Russian orthography works. And look, I once again for, forgot to put the W in and put it in last. Yeah, for the W I was kind of using the character for the sh sound, which is not in this language. So I just kind of substituted it. Um, for F and for the F and V sounds, I use those characters for the th sounds. I use the character for the j sound for for qua. And uh, then here's the uh, characters, and I noticed an accent mark. For the long vowels, because that was the only accent mark I could find for Cyr Cyrillic. Because Cyrillic does not really use accent marks. So, I went and used that, because there's not a lot of accent marks. So, yeah. But, other than that, it's it basically just repurposes Russian orthography. And now on to verb conjugation, without any sort of buffer in between. We just jump, because that's how I roll here. If you don't like it, do bad. Uh, verbs conjugate by person and number, similar to, you know, like Spanish or French. And, you know, the, the verb be in English. Uh, it They conjugate by aspect. It, it's easily confused with tense. 
but they're two different things. Tense is basically like, if you imagine a timeline here, uh, where, there was a toolbar over here, why don't I get rid of it? Uh, da, da, da. Mouse pointer is pen, here we go. Uh, if, if you just like imagine a line right here, this is a line, This is, think of this as like a, like a timeline. Uh, with tense, it's basically, you know, here's your present, here's your past, here's your future. With aspect, it's like, it's a it, bit, like, that's basically your tense. It's basically the position on this little timeline here. Aspect is the rule, is, you know, how we view the event on the timeline, or, or, or the, or the event's relation to the timeline. Like, you know, oh, that, what, that's not what I wanted to do. Go, go back, go back. Go back. I wasn't done there. So, like, for example, you've got, you know, you're, uh, you got a habitual, like, hab habitual aspect, which is basically, you know, it repeats. You know, that's, that's kind of what aspect is. And now you can go to this slide. Um, yeah, some of the things are a little bigger because whenever I copy-paste the characters in, instead of using the special characters insert thing up here it uh it, it it acts stupid that's why some things are bigger and in a different font so yeah uh there are three conjugation classes oh wait a minute wait hold up a minute i forgot something uh, i forgot to do other things um yeah it does aspect then there's mood that's basically like uh you know how how are you using the verb like uh, like there's the indicative that's used for facts or subjunctive which is used for things that aren't exactly facts and then you got you know a few others uh, like the interrogative which is <clears throat> stop doing that why is it that whatever if okay I'm just gonna move my mouse all the way over here but uh the interrogative case is used, or not case, but uh, mood is for, you know, whenever you're asking a question. You have commissive, which is whenever you're requesting or commanding something to happen. Um, volative, which is used for, you know, wishes and fears. That's basically how mood works. Then you got static dynamic. It's kind of an odd thing, but that's basically like, is the verb describing a state or a change in state? You know, like the difference between ride, like if you're writing something, you know, you're not change, you're not, you, you know, you yourself are not changing in state, you know, you're still writing it. But if you're mounting something, you're getting on top of something that's a change in state, you know, you're going from standing with your own two feet to sitting on top of something. And, you know, there's the three conjugation classes. Now, here's the imperfective aspect. Now, I'm, I'm going to explain what the aspects are in a couple slides, but for now, let's just look. Um, it is conjugated by person and number, which you can see by the singular, singular, singular dual, plural, SDP, SDP. Uh, singular, you know, I already know that it, what that is. It's basically only one thing. Dual is if there's exactly two things. And plural is for if it's three or more. You know, so that's kind of your guide right there. And, and, uh, if we go by the ya pre prefixes first, the singular, for the first person singular is ya, and then you got, uh, dia, pia, Sai, Diza, and Pai, Ah, Da, Pa. It, it sounds weird whenever I do it because I still haven't exactly figured out long vowels, but whatever. Um, I'll get it eventually. That's all I gotta know. And then for the yeah prefixes, it's basically the same thing except the vowels are a little different. You know, you got ye, die, pie, and then sel, doze, doze, peo, e, de, pe. And then you, du, piu, sue, desu, pue, u, du, pu. P 
poo. Boo. <laughs> That's your guide if you can't remember how to pronounce that. Just say poo. That's it. Here's the perfective. Now once again I'm gonna explain what the what the difference is later. But for now, here are um well, one thing, you can obviously see a difference between the perfective and the imperfective. In the perfective, there are no long vowels for the prefixes, so you go there, you don't have to worry about length. And there is a vowel in front of each of the things. And also, I added an M in the, uh, in the third person singulars. So for the ya prefix, you got aya, adia, apia, asi, adiza, api, am, ama, ada, apa. And then for the ye prefixes, you got eye, edie, epie, eso, edoze, epo, eme, ede, epe. And then for the u prefixes, you got uyu, udyu, upyu, use, udezu, upe. Umu, Udu, and Upu. Upu, you, Upu, Upu. Upu, Yupu. Yupu. That's what it is. Uh, and, you know, here's how to use them. The imperfective aspect is to describe events as a process, which you usually do in, for, with, incomplete as, with incomplete actions. So, if you, if it helps you, you can kind of think of the imperfective aspect kind of as a present tense. You know, you use it for things you haven't done or haven't completed or that you're in the process of doing. The perfective aspect is used to describe events as an unanalyzed whole, which we usually do with completed actions. So think of that as, you know, your past tense. And I would give examples, but I haven't exactly, you know, given y'all anything else. So, this is the end. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. Uh, I like it if you thought it was high quality, which I honestly don't think it is, because I'm the kind of person that can't make anything professional, even if it's life dependent on it, because I have zero skills. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, uh, this has been Snap. And adios.